Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've shot a video for the channel. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but it's been super, super busy trying to get this thing ready for the street. Um, <clears throat> so you'll notice immediately quite a bit of things have happened since the last video. Uh, we were talking about the fuel system uh, last time. That's all done now. Uh, and it works great. Um, so fuel system, the final setup is two Walber 255s in the tank. Um, it's got two dash six uh, returns. It uses the original um, five sixteenths fuel feed line as the return, and then it splits off in a Y fitting uh, and goes to both sides of the tank. So the feed is two Wolver two fifty fives. Both of them go through check valves, and then they go into a Y fitting that's two dash six into single dash eight. And then there is a Dash 8 hard line that runs all the way to the front of the car. Um, might be able to show you guys that. Let's see if I can get this flashlight out without knocking everything over. All right. <clears throat> yep, there's the, well, there's the new exhaust. Uh, the hard line's on the other side. Had to redo the exhaust because um, it was dragging, but... That was no big deal. So let's see how bad that is. Uh, you can see the check valves there. Um, let's come this angle. There's the check valves. There you go. There's the Y that goes into the single dash eight, and then that hard line runs all the way up to the front. You probably won't be able to see that, so sorry. But, uh, and then as you can see, the exhaust now has a lot more ground clearance than it did. So, that's good. Um, <clears throat> so those couple of things are done. Um, the fenders are finished. So, uh, some of you guys probably remember what those looked like before, uh, where it was three pieces. From here to here is a section from here and then all this hood line is the Evo fender and then this back part is a section a coupe fender as well <clears throat> so um, got those all welded up and fillered primered and painted and clear coated on both sides and then uh, also got the side skirts painted and installed and they look a whole lot better than they used to uh, the paint on them was terrible when I got them. Same color, barely. But, um, anyway, so that's all finished. Uh, I bought these headlights on Amazon, I believe. Uh, they're made by some guy. Um, his username is Crazy the God. Um, they're just, uh, they're, they're depot headlights that have a Bison and projector fitted, um, retrofitted to them. Uh, it's got, Halos on it right now. Uh, probably not going to keep those. Uh, probably going to do uh, some work as far as retrofitting goes. I've got a couple. I got some plans for it after everything else is finished. Uh, but that'll that'll come later. Right now, I just needed them to work. So, and of course, they came with new corners, which is a good thing because mine were both broken. Um, so the front bumper couldn't make it into paint. Uh, before getting the car tuned, uh, it uh, we needed to clearance the intercooler, and I got tuned last Friday, and the intercooler showed up on Wednesday. So it was kind of a mad rush getting this thing clearanced to be able to fit and be able to drive this thing um, on the dyno and not have any issues with it rubbing the intercooler. And I, last thing I want to do is damage a brand new intercooler. Um, which brings us to that part. Uh, this is a driven fabrication uh, three and a half inch vibrant core intercooler and as you can see it fits perfect. Um, it's a little narrower than some of the aftermarket ones so it clears the headlights pretty easily or the fog lights pretty easily I mean. Um, so that, that was one of the concerns that I had uh, for upgrading the intercooler, <coughs> intercooler on this car was I, I definitely didn't want to lose my fog lights so um, but, uh, that's not all that's done. 
Um, you probably noticed I mentioned uh, getting the car tuned. And we did. And it runs great. Uh, I was kind of worried about how it was going to perform. It uh, performed flawlessly on the dyno. And uh, ended up putting down 366 all-wheel horsepower. Which is pretty good, um, considering that it's on a stock hot side turbo. Um, some of you guys might remember, this is a TD-05 uh, stock EVO 4 turbo that I upgraded the compressor and the housing on. Uh, to a 20G, but it's still got the original hot side, uh, which I want to say is an 8.5, might be a 9.5, because I'm pretty sure the Evo 9 is a 10.5 hot side, but um, <clears throat> that's a pretty restrictive hot side either way for this engine, uh, even the 10.5 Evo 9 hot side is, is pretty restrictive for this, so um, she put down 350 on the dot at 16 pounds and only 366 at 22 pounds. So in the seven pounds, we only made 16 more horse. Uh, so it's definitely running up against uh, some kind of block. And like I said, I'm 100% positive that that's turbo related. Um, so a couple other issues that we've I've had with the car. Um, the front O2 sensor is not, doesn't seem to be cycling properly. Uh, it, it shows up all over on the logs and uh, anything in closed loop on the car, it, it doesn't run anything close to right. So I have to keep the car, the revs up right now to keep it in open loop. Otherwise, it, it runs, it, it likes to idle at like 16 to 17.0 AFR, which is way, way lean. Um, but it runs perfectly if I, if I keep it above 2500 RPM. So... It's definitely, it's definitely a closed loop issue, uh, and that's not the only problem I've had with this ECU. So I verified all the wiring is correct for the three-port boost controller. It's got next to no resistance between uh, the brown wire and the ECU, <coughs> and it has a perfect battery voltage signal on the power side. Um, but if I hook my laptop up with EvoScan and try to activate the solenoid, EvoScan says it activates, and it'll activate other things like the radiator fans and the fuel pumps, but it, it will not activate the boost control solenoid, and, and we were not able to make that happen. I'm going to say that's probably something to do with the fact that I'm running on a Lancer ECU with an Evo ROM. So I think we were pretty sure that that was all going to work, but I think maybe that that's an issue related to that ECU. So uh, probably be getting an Evo ECU here sometime soon. Uh, the good news is that the tune that I have it just flashes straight over, so it's not really a huge deal. It's just some extra cash I gotta spend. Um, but other than that, everything works really well. Um, it's tuned on a manual boost controller at the moment. You can see it. It's probably the only car ever to have a manual boost controller right underneath a three-port boost controller. But what can you do? So. Um, so, uh, a couple other small issues it had. Um, uh, let's see, what else was there? Oh, I'm running a fuel filter that is not good enough for my injectors. I did not realize that. It's a 40 micron filter that I've got on there right now. Um, and apparently for these injectors, I'm supposed to have a 6 micron. Uh, so that'll be here tomorrow, and I'll be changing that out. And... What else? Oh, we ran into some uh, crankcase pressure issues, which is pretty common for Evos. Um, we ended up blowing the dipstick out on the dyno uh, under under boost. So um, I've already got an oil catch can here. It's just not plumbed in yet, but we'll have that fixed uh, here in the next couple of days. So along with the fuel filter, I've got the last couple of fittings I need to plumb in the oil catch can. Um, and delete the PCV system. So uh, those two things will be done soon. Um, I spent the last hour or so putting this DEI reflective heat tape on the hood um, because and this has been an issue for a while. I've just been putting off taking care of it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But yeah, you can kind of see there's some heat, heat fractures in the carbon. 
and that's just because it's on this leading edge. I mean, it's right above the exhaust manifold. So, um, pretty pretty clear why that's happening. So, <clears throat> that's uh, hopefully going to be taken care of with this heat tape. And then I'll probably get a piece of clear vinyl uh, to stick over the top of it. That was suggested by one of the uh, subscribers on here, which that's a great idea. So thanks for that. Um, other than that, for the summer, uh, I'm planning on getting a clear cam gear cover for the bling factor. No, no, it's definitely so that I can inspect my timing belt. It's definitely the reason. Um, not because I like seeing spinning things in my engine bay. So, I get that. Um, I will be getting some harnesses for the car. Um, hopefully some trust, JDM trust items. Since most of the interior is blue, I think a set of trust harnesses will look really good in there. Um, oh, I finally replaced my tires. Um, these are 215 45 17 Bridgestone Potenza RE 71Rs which um, if you are into autocross or track racing at all, these are an excellent street tire. Uh, you can compete on them, you can drive on them every day. They on the only downside with them is they don't last very long. Uh, most people only get six to 10,000 miles out of them, but they are unbelievably sticky tires. So, and so far I am loving them. Um, Oh, another thing I have to fix is, and I've already got the stuff to do it, uh, my oil pressure sender line is remote. Um, I've got the sender mounted to the back of the block in an 8L clamp uh, with that rubber boot to reduce vibrations to the sender. And then I've got a Dash 3 AN hose that goes from the oil filter housing to that. Uh, that ended up touching the exhaust and it melted all of the rubber on the outside. It's not leaking, but since it was hot enough to melt the rubber on the outside, I'm sure it's damaged the rubber on the inside. Uh, so I've got a new one of those on the way, and then I picked up this, which is um, going to be my insurance policy. We'll put this around the new one, um, just in case it gets close to that exhaust again. That'll that'll protect it from that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think everything's pretty good. Like, I really, uh, it, the car is just an absolute blast. I mean, 366 all wheel, that's 440 crank, uh, according to the uh, dyno computer. And this car should be somewhere between 2,500 and 2,700 pounds. I haven't had a chance to weigh it yet, but stock curb weight was 2,200. Um, and I can tell you that this thing is an absolute rocket. I mean, it's just unbelievable, the acceleration. So, um, <clears throat> my tuner, Corbin Johnson, was <laughs> he's practically begging me to put a bigger turbo on this thing because the in that's really all that's holding the engine back. It's got enough fuel system. The top end and bottom end are set up for all the horsepower it could I could possibly want to make. It's just the turbo holding it back, but to be quite honest with you, this is enough horsepower for now. So, um, it's definitely a good amount of horsepower for some track racing. Um, I may end up doing something bigger later, but we'll just, we'll see, you know. I, I'm just going to enjoy the car this year, take care of, you know, little things here and there. Um, get the car up to snuff to where I won't, you know, be nervous about driving it long distances. And just enjoy it, so... Uh, but yeah, little things. I'll probably get the front bumper painted here in the next couple of weeks, and the rear bumper will be repainted as well from where it, the paint cracked on it. And uh, here, along here, and then across here to here. So I think we had too much plastic prep on the bumper when we... And that was our first time ever painting a plastic bumper, so... That's not a big deal. You know, it, it's a lot cheaper when you spray it yourself. So uh, We'll have that fixed uh, here this summer. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be at some of the events around. I'm going to try to make the Chicago Grid Life event. And uh, yeah, hope to see some of you guys out there. So anyway, that's an update on the car for now. Um, stay tuned. I'll probably have some clips of it running uh, very soon. 
I have some dyno footage, but unfortunately, because we were fighting with the boost controller, uh, the pulls that I have recorded are only at 9 PSI, uh, which doesn't really give an, like, uh, it gives somewhat of an indicator of what the car is like, but it's, it's a lot more violent than it was <laughs> in, in those clips. So I might throw them in, uh, just, just because, but, uh, definitely not an accurate representation of how the car is to drive now. Um, but stay tuned. I'm sure I'll have some, some, uh, clips of pulls, uh, very soon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.